I'm often asked, do I have a favourite garden? <laughs> it's like asking me, do I have a favourite flower? It's really impossible to answer. But there are a number of gardens that I love to revisit time and time again. One of them is Cloud Hill, on the hillside in Olinda, just outside Melbourne. Jeremy Francis created this stunning garden and knows it inside and out. Now, I've been lucky enough to enjoy the many faces of Cloud Hill as it journeys through the seasons. But this year, Jeremy tells me he saw the garden in a whole new light as unusual weather extended summer flowering well into autumn. We started work right here in 1992, so that's 28 years ago now. And in 28 years, I've never seen a summer quite like this one. Cloud Hill is cleverly divided into sections or garden rooms. This allows for different themes or colours to really create points of interest. Now, these cool borders are stunning, filled with silvers, blues and a pop of pink. The aster, Little Carlo, is looking just glorious and the big ornamental grasses are putting on a great show. The Alstroemeria have been flowering for six months with plenty more to come. As a contrast, the warm borders are full of vibrant yellows and oranges and reds. The Helleniums are just magnificent, still flowering weeks after they usually finish, as are the Dahlias. The old Bishop of Landaff, with its distinctive blood red flowers, is a real standout. To draw the eye up, there are some magnificent larger trees as well. The golden cotylus, the uh, golden spirit, uh, is looking pretty good right now. The Circus canadensis forest pansy are looking absolutely magnificent. And uh, they're plants that we pollard in the winter, so they're particularly dense and lush, and they show just how well those plants can be when they're pollarded. It's a really severe form of pruning pollarding. Now, in Europe, for centuries, they've pollarded willow, the salix, to get those lovely new shoots to make into, into bamboo baskets and the like. Now, what Jeremy was doing to his yellow leaf form of cotinus or smokebush, I've done here the same thing with our purple leaf form of cotinus. This smokebush is called Grace. Now, it would normally be up to about five or six metres. I haven't got the space for it. But I like all the foliage down at ground level. So we cut it down really hard every second year. We got this lovely new purple growth and then the smoky flowers later in the season. And we can see them right in front of us. All that extra growth at Cloud Hill means extra pruning. Hedges that Jeremy would normally clip once a year are getting a second or even a third haircut to keep them at their best. An aspect of Cloud Hill that I've always loved is the integration of artwork and sculpture into the garden. Now, it's quite an eclectic mix from the traditional to quite modern. There's always something new to discover, like these life-size works by sculptor Graeme Foote, which form part of his eminent Australian Women series. Art in a landscape is a great way to focus the view, drawing you through the planting in a sort of multi-century experience. If you're looking for some autumn inspiration for your garden, it doesn't get much better than this little collection. The Sedum Autumn Joy is looking magnificent and the Buddleia is really interesting. It's a Buddleia crisper, which is great for summer foliage. There's quite an unusual hydrangea, Aspera stragosa, which can be very sensitive to full sun, but is doing magnificently here. Providing a backdrop to this picture Senkaki maple is showing late summer, early autumn colour. Jeremy's knack of finding really unusual plants and then experimenting with the planting is a real feature of Cloud Hill. What's my favourite section of Cloud Hill? It's whatever's next to flower, I suppose, <laughs> where we have about 25 separate rooms. And so we try and work it so there's always two or three garden rooms at their best at any one time. I guess the important thing is to allow the garden to surprise you as you're walking around.
you know, you really should put Cloud Hill on your list to visit or maybe revisit in another season. It's not only beautiful to look at, but as you walk through all the different garden rooms, you come across another piece of inspiration and a surprise around every corner.